I'm Ricardo Tosi, and uh, hello, Walter. Um, today, I'm going to have a chat about Reclaim, a project that we did in the past, and uh, an introduction of remanufacturing, and a brief introduction of the MTC as well. But first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I'm currently doing a doctorate with Birmingham University and uh, uh, studying on additive technologies, mainly electron beam melting and plasma transfer arc um, in uh, metallurgy. So my aim is to uh, improve the productivity in additive manufacturing. This is a very hot topic at the moment. Uh, so I'm based at the MTC, uh, which is in Coventry, uh, since uh, almost five years at the moment. Uh, where we have uh, the National Additive Center and NetShape. So, uh, just a brief introduction of the MTC. Uh, I don't know how many people have been at the MTC. A few of you? All of you? Yeah? So, not the MTC pretty well, though. Uh, so, it born like, uh, it's been founded like 2010 uh, with the uh, universities and uh, Technology Welding Institute. Uh, with some support of industries as well. And what we do at the MTC, we are trying to push technology uh, to, to the market. So we are helping like, uh, to develop uh, in early stage techniques, technologies to push like, uh, to the end users. So what we do, we do development. We try to help like, uh, uh, to solve like, this dead valley problem. So like, uh, put some funding, help universities, understand companies, and try to develop solution and solution, working solution uh, for end users. Uh, so we invest money and we try to give this benefit to the end user to help them. So there are three main groups at the MTC. I'm working for the te component technology group and uh, uh, especially in the uh, net shape and additive manufacturing group uh, where we have like uh, net shape te techniques and additive manufacturing systems. I will go through later on. So at the MTC we have currently several members like 85. So you can see on the top right the tire one, the middle one, tire two, and the bottom one, the tire three members at the MTC. Uh, so are, 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 quite, are quite a lot considering that the company is like uh, five years old. Uh, we also have more than 400 em employees at the moment. And we are growing very, very fast. We are building new uh, facilities as well. Uh, so just as I said, uh, we have the National Center at the MTC. I hope you had the chance to visit it. It's, it's been... Uh, it's been on since uh, June last year, uh, where we have uh, uh, several solutions inside, uh, like uh, uh, additive uh, manufacturing techniques. Uh, I'm talking about like powder bed solution, like EBM and SLM systems, uh, plus uh, direct energy deposition uh, using laser and, uh, and plasma arc as well. Uh, but also we have the uh, net shape manufacturing uh, that is uh, divided in, in few in few groups like uh, uh, powder heaping, like generate net shape parts using powder and filling canisters, and this is also for the uh, SIP, like cold isostatic pressing, and we also have uh, like a metal injection molding. So the topic of today, I would like to introduce first of all what is remanufacturing, because I'm talking about uh, reclaim, and there's uh, also a remanufacturing process. But a lot of people heard about remanufacturing, but what is really remanufacturing nowadays? So it can be confused about different techniques, but uh, the remanufacturing is basically when a component gives a second life uh, to the part, and uh, so when the component goes back to the manufacturing company, or some other company to be like rebuilt or change a few warm parts so in order to sell it again to the market. So which are the benefits in terms of uh, remanufacturing? So first of all is like uh, the uh, financial environmental opportunity. Everyone knows that uh, 
we are looking to improve uh, the impact in our globe, like the sustainability. Like a few months ago, there was like a meeting in Paris where a lot of targets been signed, like to reduce emissions and everything. So the remanufacturing approach can be like a, a very good solution for company for the future, the right way like to uh, improve like the emissions and generate like uh, uh, sustainable products. So uh, what does involve? Involve like uh, the, you can use less materials so you can uh, uh, reuse the part that you sell previously in the market. Uh, so you can like uh, keep like your product and uh, uh, giving it like a second life. Uh, and this what involve involve like the cost, the cost of uh, the saving, and uh, also the uh, remanufacturing time. So you can save the time because if you need to make, uh, if you need just to repair a worn part and giving a change of just few products, you don't need to generate like a new part. You don't need to have like remanufacture, manufacture like make all the parts to generate this new component again. So the consequence of this is like having a second life of the part, as I said, and we can extend the life. So giving like a second chance to this product to go to the market. So what's going on nowadays? Nowadays, uh, we have a few issues on education. Not many people know what is remanufacturing in the school. So they are start teaching this, and this is very important. This is like vital for the companies. Because this can be like a profitable route uh, to meet legislation. We have targets to respect. And this can be like a good approach, the right approach, or something that at least you need to think about. And uh, so this is uh, uh, all the products that get remanufactured, they, they also coming with uh, some certifications what the market like and the end, end user want to get some certification on your product, where this, this product come from and uh, in which way it's being manufactured. So the market definitely appreciate if your parts is going to be remanufactured. So in terms of uh, how to make a part for the remanufacturing, so there are several approaches that you normally need to follow. So it's like a combination of, of things, of tasks that the designer uh, need, to, need to agree during the uh, designing uh, time of the product. So uh, for example, uh, you need to design like a product that need to be uh, reused again. So some parts get worn. So you need to change this component if you want to have a design for remanufacturing. If you really want to give a second life to this part, you need to think which part get damaged and try to remanufacture them. So if you have a, like a big assembly, so just few parts they have like uh, they get worn, they get in friction or whatever. So that part need to be changed. So the design is very important, and um, and the graph that they put together is like to explain like uh, the the fundamental points that the designer need to follow uh, during the uh, manufacturing designing process. So this is an example of what I found online. Uh, I was planning to go on holiday like a month ago, and I was looking to buy a camera. And I was online on eBay. And there was this camera was like uh, with a very competitive price, but was remanufactured. And I said, I'm gone. What is, what? Still have the same quality, this camera. Do, can I buy it? So what I noticed is that there was everything explained on eBay. So what the remanufacturing is, and there are also um, on the bottom left this blue chain explained to everyone how to how the product go back to the manufacturing company, how get through like a certificate process to guarantee the functionality of the of the part that is going again into the market. But saying that, we have companies like Caterpillar, they are doing, they have like a remanufacturing group inside the, inside the company. So I'm not talking about a few years like the GoPro, but this is like 40 years of experience. So it's been a long time. 
So they have a lot of employees, and uh, and they sell a very competitive product. So you can imagine like a Caterpillar engine. It costs a lot of money, a lot, really. So which part get worn? The part that they are moving, the part that get fluids go in. So if you design an engine where all these parts can go out and you can replace them and you can guarantee to your end user that it is perfectly fine, it works like the previous one or even better, so the customer is happy. Also, if I can save like 40% of the price, giving maybe the engine back. After this introduction, I would like to explain what we did uh, like a few years ago with a project called Reclaim. This was uh, at that time a TSB, a technology strategy board funded program uh, with uh, uh, three and a half years and uh, uh, one million budget. The target of this project was um, repairing high value components using like an automatic system that does like uh, uh, machining, depositing new material and inspection in one single cell. So this was the, uh, the partnership, several companies all together uh, with different aims and targets. MTC joined uh, in July 2011. So you can see we have like uh, welding expertise, universities, uh, end users, and uh, inspection and uh, software companies. So what we tried, we tried to do at that time, having like a combined like subtractive and additive system. So at that time was uh, was a bit strange really when I when I joined the project was uh, I, I had uh, several years of experience in uh, CNC's and. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they would like to install like an additive process inside. It was quite strange. So in this slide, we can see the advantages of machining that everyone knows. But also, we can see the, uh, the characteristic of additive manufacturing processes. So where we save the material, we don't waste much material as we do with uh, the CNC systems. So. Which was the challenge at the time? It's like combining uh, those two techniques together. Because you can have benefits if you can do that. It's like having two techniques in one single cell. So you can uh, save uh, your footprint in the company. You can have two systems in one. So like if you want to do machining and then adding material, you can do it in one single cell, not like moving your part around, having like two, three employees. So using cladding, you can have like a, a selection of materials that you can, uh, you can pick from. The freedom in, ge like in geometrical deposition at a good surface finish because you can combine additive and cladding. So if you clad and then you finish with a milling tool, you can have a very smooth surface finish. We people are aware that the additive process uh, they have some limitation in surface finishing, so they are quite rough. So you need like uh, post treatments. So the application that you can achieve with this system were several. So like uh, coatings, coating surfaces with different types of material, stylite, whatever, or add features on the top of existing parts. You can imagine having like a very expensive. Uh, material that you need for I don't know for I don't know for an assembly or for some assembly. I remember like years ago I was uh, generating massive parts with a very hard material, just for like a small part of the assembly was required that material. You can imagine now having buying like a a normal material and had just this, the special material that you need, focus in the area that. That, that you want to, but you can also uh, remanufacture parts, uh, like uh, giving like a second life, remove the worn part and add it, and add the other material, 
or directly generate like a 3D component using your five axis uh, system. It's very precise, so you can have like a, a good quality part. So during the project, uh, we try to provide to the system like a CNC machine integrating this cladding system inside and have all the process completely automatic. So using like a, um, a Renishaw probe to um, understand the geometry of the component and uh, installing a, a cladding system. We had like a second hand CNC machine that we refurbished at that time because it was quite old. And then there was a Delcam was, uh, is a, probably know is Delcam is doing a adaptive uh, CAD CAM. And, uh, and then we try to integrate to everything in one single cell and run everything together with, uh, without any human assistance. So uh, these were the, the program. So uh, it was quite a big challenge because uh, we tried to design also new cladding head to install inside the machine. So the cladding head was... Uh, uh, you can load the cladding head from uh, from the pallet, the CNC pallet. So it was quite a big challenge to design it. And then uh, there was a, the Weld Inst Institute to help us in parameter development. Plus, uh, Rennie Show, their expertise in, uh, in scanning. Then uh, we need to integrate everything inside this cell. And then try to do some demonstration part. So this was the system that we had at the time. Uh, so we basically install like the the fiber laser. You can find it like on the left hand side. It's a 200 box fiber laser, and then there is a chiller to cool the laser. Um, there was like a clever docking station uh, installed inside the head of the system, which allowed to deliver everything required for the the position like powder gases and the laser itself plus argon uh, for the shielding the control unit and the and the feeding system so i'll just have like a brief uh, speech about the laser so we decided to install like a fiber laser uh, so it was just just a 200 box fiber laser so we install fiber laser for the quality of the laser itself. So it was like a Gaussian curve laser uh, with a, a powder feeding system. So we used the powder uh, less than 50 micron. Uh, at that time, we were running with the uh, Inconel 71A, nickel-based material. Uh, but with, with laser, you, can, uh, you have the flexibility to blow which material you, you want to. Obviously, you need to generate the right settings to deposit the material. And then uh, we use the fiber laser also for the impact that you have on the surface because they have a very uh, low uh, heating affecting zone, so very low impact, uh, very low damaging on the surface where you're going to deposit the material itself. So we had a case study at the time, a case study from, uh, from uh, Cummins. So uh, the target was like uh, getting like the component, remove the damage part, uh, inspect it, and uh, generate like the tool path to deposit like a new material on the top, and uh, and machine it back, having like a good surface finishing, uh, and use the part again. So the case study that we use uh, was from Cummins Turbo, was a, a turbo wheel. You can imagine like a turbine inside an engine is spinning more than 100,000 revolutions per minute. So they get worn, obviously, after a while, especially in the, in the external side. So what we did, the project was like removing the external uh, material, the, dam the damaged material, and then try to uh, detect uh, the, the shape of the blade and generating a toolpath to deposit like a new material on the top of it as you can see in the picture. So we went through the development of the system because it was completely new. So we did all the alignments, all the docking, all the, 
all the trouble of mounting like a laser inside the CNC, basically. And uh, what we did, we tried the laser first. We tried to develop the material using different setting, developing like a new design of experiments using different geometries, a different tool path, using like the fourth axis as well to, the, to make complex geometries. So on the top left pictures, you can see the first trials that we did. It looks like a picture of a piece of cheese, actually. A lot of uh, uh, argon gas was trapped inside. So it means that was not very good. The mechanical properties was horrible. So uh, after like a good development on the right side, you can see like a section of, um, of a wheel of a, yeah. And uh, you can see like the, uh, the bottom is Inconel 713 and the bottom and the top that's been deposited by laser is Inconel 718. So you can see the quality. The quality deposited is very similar to the bottom one. So there was no porosity, was very well aligned. And we achieved a very good quality. So this was the video that, that we did at that time when we were depositing the material. So this deposition is running after an inspection. So before that, the probe was coming out, detecting the geometry and generating automatically the toolpath. Was everything fully automatic? So you can see now uh, it's like regenerating uh, like that top tip, depositing some material. So we estimate to repair all these blades, uh, they were like 13, now it's speed up. Uh, it was taking like uh, an hour, more or less. Uh, this was a very small case study. Uh, this turbine will cost probably 30 pounds from China. But you can imagine like uh, a big turbine for, for a track, a turbine that costs like 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, and get damaged. What well, you do? You try, you try to save it in somehow, but in which way the, the conventional way that they are normally using at the moment is manual. Everything is manual. So you need to remove the, the part and then take like a skill operator to add material on the top of it. And then send in for the final finishing and whatever. It's very complicated. So with this solution, we realized that we were able to have to combine those systems together. So the project was finished in May 2012, and uh, was a very successful project. So we had new two new employees at the MTC. One of them is myself. Uh, we had successful, successfully developed a new technology, a new approach. And uh, one of the uh, person inside the, this uh, group of people during the project, he managed to patent the process. They have a very nice patent now. Very, very nice patent. And a very good company as well, called HMT, Ivory Manufacturing Technologies. So it's, uh, they are retrofitting the cladding heads in conventional systems. So when we had this system around at the MTC, a lot of customers say, oh, that's fantastic. How oh, we can have one of these systems? We say, sorry, this is just a prototype. So there was a lot of interest. So what's happened next? We tried to find like a, a CNC manufacturer that would like donate us a system to install the technique, and we can donate back the technology. We struggled a little bit at that time. But at the end, we found like Hemuel. Hemuel was like a, a five-axis system. Hemuel is a company in Germany, first of all. And they, uh, they are specialized in uh, making uh, uh, big, big blades for uh, uh, thermal. So at that time, they loaned us a system. We installed like, all these uh, laser docking system, clever. Uh, bits inside the machine, and uh, with the support of Delcam, they were generating like the uh, the profile, uh, the the toolpath, 
and the uh, HMT was uh, taking care of this docking system laser head and the MTC that we cover like the scientific part in, on cladding. So we managed to generate this. This was like uh, the demo that was on uh, during EMO, EMO in 2014 in Germany. And there was a lot. So we are removing the damage part. And now you can see we are loading the cladding head. There is this docking system where it's delivering uh, all the needs for cladding. And now it's depositing the material on the top. So this demo was running all day, every day for the entire conference. Because basically, you add and remove. You add and remove. You can carry on forever. So yeah, at that time, there was a lot of interest. It was the first time that we put this system in the market and end up with an award. So the people from Hamuel, they write like three sentences about this system. And then it was, very, it was not expected. And we won an award as the best multifunctional system in all EMO. EMO was massive, really big, really. So after that, all the companies, a lot of other CNC users, saw our technique. And uh, they started to develop systems. So uh, this is the third generation of Reclaim, we call it. So uh, since, like, I think, an year, we are helping Mazak to develop like uh, a cladding head solution integrate inside the current system they have. Actually, I saw the system there today, and I asked them to, uh, to run the system for me. I did introduce myself. And, uh, and the operator, he turned himself, and I was like crossing his fingers. I say, why you do that? I say, well, you know, this system is new. Uh, we don't know very well. It's been developed in, J in Japan. So uh, it was cladding. It was good. So this is a demo that I get uh, from them, from um, actually uh, uh, my colleague at the MTC. So it's like a depositing. Uh, I think this is uh, a 316 uh, L uh, stainless steel. Uh, on our um, is a late, it's like a five axis. So yeah, there was like a, a publication from Mazak, and there was also a case study uh, how to show how you can uh, uh, add features on a component, saving time com uh, compared to the conventional way that uh, you are normally using to generate this uh, complex part. Actually, I think there are like uh, a few sectors there. Um, they are covering like uh, different sectors with different shapes, I guess. So after all of this system, what's happened? This is, these are um, companies who are making hybrid system at the moment. So in 2012 was Hemuel. was just Hemuel. In 2014, sorry, not 2012, like two years ago. And now we have several companies. DMG is having uh, milling and turning. Uh, Hamel, Hermel is having like a, uh, is like a, um, it's not with laser, it's with plasma, it's high velocity uh, deposition. But we also have a grinding company inside. And coming soon, I take out the, the names for coming soon for uh, uh, political reasons, but a lot of other other um, companies are developing uh, cladding systems. I just realized that I don't have one final slide. Apologies for that. Um, it's not even there. Nothing. So I can say there was a, like a big uh, but at the end. 
So we have a lot of companies who is making hybrid system at the moment, but how many systems are being sold so far? Just few. Why? Why? We are trying to have an additive process inside the CNC uh, system. So the CNC has a lot of bearings, it's moving fast, it's a close environment. We use coolant, they get contaminations. So additive, depositing powder using a laser, it is like, uh, it's very, it's a very scientific process, I can say. You can set the parameters and you can go forever, but if you want to have like more things, like when you make one component, you want to machine it back. If you machine it, if it's titanium or nickel, you would like to use the coolant inside your, your system. So these are right contaminations. And um, how is difficult to use an additive system? How you can generate like a, a tool path easily? So it's very complicated. So now we have a new market, an hybrid market. But where this is going? I think I'm from the MTC, so I'm not, uh, I'm not selling you anything. It would be very nice. This would be a, a potential system for the future, but some more development need to be done, I think. Because there is interest, a big interest from end users. But companies, I think, they need to improve. Uh, they need to improve that. Like uh, also post treatment, what do we do? Like uh, we are heating up. Uh, you are melting metals inside, so it's like more than a thousand degrees. What's going on if we deposit for one hour, two hours? It's getting everything hot. What do you do about your table distortion, substrate? You know, your your machine itself. So yeah, there are several issues, and I wanna. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Any question? Please. Thank you. Have you got provision, or did you think about non-destructive testing within the machine, or is that further development? This is actually a very, very, very uh, good question. Um, you can imagine that now you are docking like a laser, right? You are docking like a system inside the CNC. So uh, you can, I think, add any system, add the system for uh, inspection, like a clever inspection, or using the laser for other, other purposes, like, uh, I don't know, surface treatment, or laser marking, or I don't know, a lot of applications. But yes, uh, we noticed that uh, having like an hybrid system means not just combining uh, cladding and the machining, but it's having like a, a flexible system inside. So it's changing the concept. So inside your CNC, you don't want to have just meals. You, you can have other things. It's a nasty environment, the high pressure coolant, or whatever you have inside. So you need to be very careful. But I want to say yes. Yes. Mm. You can add these things inside. You're welcome. <laughs> so just to correct one point in your presentation, it's yep. um, 718 Inconel being clad on the Mazak. Yes. Not steel. Excuse me? It's what? 718 Inconel. Inconel 718 yeah. on the Mazak machine being clad and not stainless steel, as you mentioned. Right. So. Um, the 718 will refer me, uh, be, uh, with the project that we did in the past. No, no on the machine here, the Mazak machine. Yeah, I don't know what they are. The it's positive. cladding 718. It's cladding 718. Yeah, just, just to confirm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. Good. Thank you.